we're gonna talk about today might be, oh, darn it. What we're gonna talk about today might be a controversial subject. It might bring sighs of annoyance, maybe love to some people. Tenors. But not just any tenors. The five greatest tenors of all time. I have been super excited to do this video. Granted, before I go any further, I have to say this is my list of the greatest tenors of all time. If you have a favorite tenor that didn't make it on the list, don't worry, you're not wrong. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. You're just slightly less right than I am. Being a tenor is rewarding. However, it is also extremely scary and it has extreme pressure because everybody's waiting for those high notes and you can mess it up or crack. And listen, when a tenor messes up or cracks, oof, it sounds like they need to be put in the hospital. Yikes. However, there are a few of these tenors who have revolutionized opera and music with their amazing charisma and amazing voice. Many of them are still household names. Here are my top five greatest tenors of all time. Fritz Wunderlich was one of the greatest lyric tenors, born in Kusel, Germany on the 26th of September 1930. He was born into a musical family, his mother a violinist and his father a choir master. In his career, his contribution to the lyric tenor roles, particularly Mozart roles and German leader is highly cherished. He expanded to the most popular Italian operas too. However, though, in his time, it was more customary to sing the Italian operas, but in the local language. So most of the recordings of him singing the Italian operas are actually in German. Tragically, his legendary career was cut too short as he accidentally fell down a stairwell and died when he was 35 years old, just short of his 36th birthday and his debut at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York. Fritz is one of my favorite tenors because of the sheer beauty of his tone. He is also very versatile, being able to sing the most intense opera roles and still get this unmatched silvery tone in art song. His voice is just beautiful. I really admire his tone of voice and he's a tenor that I really relate to. Give him a listen, it's amazing. No puede ser, It's impossible to talk about tenors or the 20th century or the 21st century without talking about Placido Domingo. Placido Domingo was born on the 21st of January, 1941, supposedly, in Madrid, Spain. He started singing as a baritone in Sarsuela productions, but he eventually took on the tenor repertoire and expanded himself into being a fantastic spinto tenor that could perform the lights out. Placido Domingo's career took off and he eventually became one of the most well-known figures in the music business to this day. On top of the most vast opera repertoire in history, he has also recorded and performed some operas like Verdi's Otello more times than anybody in history. He went on to become one of the three tenors touring all over the world and an arts administrator in Los Angeles Opera, Washington National Opera. He is still singing in his late 70s. This guy is pushing 80. He has returned to his baritone roots, singing some of the hardest baritone roles out there all over the world. 
Although Placido has recently received some bad criticism and controversy in the news lately, we still have to acknowledge the legendary status of this man's career. I grew up in a family of musicians with four operatic tenor uncles who all greatly admired Domingo. I actually feel like Placido Domingo is like a long lost family member of mine, like an, like an uncle or something. I can't tell you how many times I've listened to the Three Tenors concert over and over again since I was a little kid. He is a huge reason why I became a singer, especially because as a Hispanic Latino singer, he has done so much for the Hispanic Latino community and has given us the inspiration to do music and to not be afraid to spread it all over the world. Now this man is the legend of all legends. Enrico Caruso was born in Naples, in the Kingdom of Italy at the time, in 1873. He grew up performing in the boys' choir and showed promise of having perhaps a musical career. His voice matured into this big and dramatic tenor voice with much musicality and intensity. And this voice was desired all over the world and Caruso's career took off. What makes his career so special is that Caruso became famous right at the start of recording technology. And he became the first singer to really become popular by recording. He became an international phenomenon. It is impossible not to mention his name when we're talking about music or sound in general. He was the first rock star. Yeah, the world would have not been the same without the life and the career of this man. He is monumental. His career at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York revolutionized music in America, starting in the early 1900s, about the turn of the century. On top of all this, he knew many composers of his time personally, and they knew who he was. He had friends like Giacomo Puccini, Francesco Cilea, Paolo Tosti, and Richard Strauss. As a result, many of the operas in the Italian Verismo period, about the late 1800s, early 1900s, they were written for him. And on top of this, when people were listening to his recordings, they were listening to this Italian opera, which he made famous all over the world. His recordings remain the principal first-hand account of how classical music and opera were performed in the Italian tradition. When you listen to Caruso, you are listening to Italian tradition from a hundred years ago and beyond. It's incredible that we can listen to people that lived so long ago. Plus, he just sounds amazing, okay? If only he had the technology that we have now to do his big tenor voice justice. Thank you, Grande Caruso. <laughs> This is my personal favorite tenor voice. Corelli was born in Ancona, Italy in 1921. His parents were not particularly musical, however his brother and he had an uncle that became opera singers. He first studied to become a naval engineer, but then entered a music competition as a dare that one of his friends made him. The judges then encouraged him to pursue a music career, and he took their advice. He signed up for the conservatory. But at the conservatory, he hated the results. After that, he famously became his own teacher, learning some technique tips from some friends and modifying it to fit his own voice. He at first had a hard time taming his enormous voice, but he eventually learned to control it and he became a jaw-dropping singer. He made his debut in 1952 in Rome. It was easy for audiences to like him as he had that tall, dark, and handsome good looks and a bulldozer of a voice. He was the whole package. Because of this, they called him the Prince of Tenors. He had his Met Opera debut in 1961 and sang 15 marvelous years there. Throughout his career, he sang mostly the Italian dramatic repertoire, 
alongside some of the greatest singers of the 20th century, like Maria Callas, Leontine Price, Tito Gobi, and others. It was really, truly the golden age of opera. Corelli is my favorite tenor voice because there's just no one else with an instrument of that size and power that can also finesse. His breath control is unmatched. His power is untouchable. The vibrancy of his tone, you cannot reproduce. He has it all in my opinion. And although I cannot listen to him sing anything else besides Italian, to me, he did what he did best and he did it in a way that was the best. I believe his recording of Tosca by Puccini in 1967 in Teatro Reggio in Parma, Italy, is probably the most astounding recording of the human voice I've ever heard. It's unreal, okay? He held notes for nearly 30 seconds, making diminuendos, destroying the opera house with his voice, and making that Italian audience quiver in their boots. It was so much that the Italian audience was losing it. They had to stop the opera and tell them that he would do encores for them after the opera was over. After the curtain dropped on Tosca, they rolled out a piano, and he sang a mini recital for them afterward. I'll be lucky if I still have a voice after rehearsal. They couldn't get enough, and honestly, neither can I. Go take a listen to Franco Corelli, it's amazing. <laughs> Yes, the great Luciano Pavarotti, you knew it was coming. Of course, the most famous opera singer who has ever lived has to go on top. Luciano Pavarotti was born in Modena, Italy in 1935 to Fernando Pavarotti, who was a baker and an amateur tenor himself, and his wife, Adele Venturi, a cigar factory worker. P.S. There are videos of Luciano singing with his father, Fernando, and it's amazing, astonishing to see how similar their voices are, go check it out. He began singing in a local church choir with his father and they pretty quickly noticed his talent. He had a couple part-time jobs to support his music career as an elementary school teacher and selling insurance. However, it was only after almost quitting music entirely and rededicating himself completely to music that Luciano Pavarotti found success in his voice. Soon he was performing regularly and found success touring with the very famous soprano at the time, Joan Sutherland, one of the greats. His major breakthrough in the United States came in 1972 when he sang the famously difficult Nine High Seas in La Fille du Regiment, an opera by Donizetti, at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York City. <laughs> This sent the audience into a frenzy and led to his nickname, the King of the High Seas. He achieved a record 17 curtain calls that night. Luciano went on to become one of the greatest voices who has ever lived and one of the most financially successful artists of his time. He made many friends in the music business and even crossed over into pop music, bringing classical music to millions of people. He was one of the three tenors as well and had a career like no other. Pavarotti eventually passed away due to pancreatic cancer in 2006. To me, there is no other tenor that truly deserves the title of the greatest of all time. Pavarotti did so much for music in general that to me, there's really no contest. As far as his voice goes, sometimes I would prefer to listen to Franco Corelli, my number two spot. However, I don't think there has ever been such a naturally perfect voice. Perfetto. 
His technique is perfect, and it's like a ray of sunshine just coming through the window in the morning. He was so charismatic, funny, and open-hearted, caring for people and caring for music. A true star. Things really haven't been the same since he passed. As my family says, extrañamos al gordito. We missed the big guy. No Si tu enjoyed my top five greatest tenors of all time list here's some honorable mentions that didn't make it on my top five list but are definitely in the top 10 and definitely some of the greatest tenors ever Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to make more videos like this if you liked it. So please, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to be notified whenever I post. If you want to listen more to these fantastic tenors, I put some links in the description below so you can go check them out. It's worth your time. Thank you for all the support you've shown my channel so far. Don't worry, there'll be more music, more videos, more good stuff coming your way. Take care and stay safe, everybody, okay? Peace and love.